This is a directed graph, one of the most important data structures every developer should know. You might not implement one to finish your next user story, but unless your project is trivial, it will boost your understanding of complex relationships. That being said, we will still code a graph and some analysis in the second part of the video, so stay tuned. Imagine this, you need to fix a bug in one component of your system. To fix it, you must change its behavior because the current one is simply wrong. But how do you know if other parts of the system rely on the old behavior? Your IDE can probably show you which modules directly use the one you are modifying, but is that enough? What about modules using those modules? And the ones beyond that? You get the point. You would have to investigate module dependencies recursively. And the best tool for this is, you guessed it, a graph. So very quickly, what is a graph? A graph consists of vertices, also called nodes, and edges, also called links. If the edges have a direction, we call it a directed graph, or digraph. If cycles are not allowed, it's called a directed acyclic graph, or DAG for short. And I bet you're using a directed acyclic graph multiple times a day without even noticing. Every time you build your software, your build system uses a directed acyclic graph to determine the correct build order. And obviously, cyclic build dependencies would not be allowed, as that would make the build impossible. But now let's get back to assessing the possible impact of the bug fix. Before we can analyze the module dependencies, we need to create a graph. Assuming we only need to do this analysis once, creating the graph manually is perfectly fine. To describe a graph, there are multiple popular formats. For me the most convenient one is the dot language of the graph with library. To start, we just need an empty text file and add digraph at the top. The graph definition follows in curly brackets. A node is defined just by its name. If the name contains spaces, it needs to be wrapped in quotes. Edges are defined by specifying the source node first, then an arrow, followed by the target node. If a node is part of an edge, it doesn't need to be defined explicitly. It's automatically created as part of the edge definition. To visualize the graph, we can use the command line tools of the graph with project to generate an image. But for a more interactive experience, I use a graph browser based on the graph with library I wrote many years ago. You can learn more about the features of this tool in these videos. As we continue our analysis and discover new dependencies, we simply add them to the file and the graph updates automatically. Without even running complex algorithms, graphs already provide value. We only need to focus on what is right in front of us, like A depends on B, and the big picture emerges automatically. Just by looking at the graph, we immediately get a sense of the scale of the subject under analysis, the possible impact of the bug fix in our example. If the graph is small and simple, the impact is likely limited. If the graph is large and complex, there is probably a bigger challenge ahead. Furthermore, we can explore different aspects of the subject under analysis effortlessly, without constantly switching between files. We can zoom into details, and we can highlight parts we are particularly interested in, or filter out parts that are no longer relevant as our analysis progresses. Creating graphs manually works, but it can be time consuming, especially if we need to do it repeatedly. Fortunately, there are various tools to automate this. The built-in analysis features of my graph browser I explain in these videos. But what if no tool fits our use case? Imagine we need to analyze the communication between multiple distributed services. Fortunately, each call is tracked and logged using a unique call ID. So we can write a simple tool to pass these log files and extract the call IDs to identify the communication between those services. The simplest approach to represent a graph in code is a list of edges. If it's a one-time script, a list of tuples works fine. Otherwise we create a small record with properties for the source node and the target node. With the data structure ready, we could generate a dot file and analyze it in the graph browser. Or we could implement an analysis algorithm like finding all possible paths from one service to another. This approach might not be very performant, but it's simple and good enough for small graphs. A more efficient approach would be to use a data structure representing a graph with nodes and edges like this, where nodes and edges reference each other. This data structure makes graph traversal much more efficient and enables advanced algorithms even for huge graphs. To simplify the creation of such a data structure, we can use a builder. Graphs have countless applications, from analyzing control flows 
to visualizing state transitions and tracking the data flow between services. There are also visualization techniques like force directed graph drawing, which help identifying patterns in huge and complex graphs. I'm actively researching these techniques and will share my findings in an upcoming video. Subscribe now so you don't miss the next deep dive into graphs. And while you wait, watch this playlist to level up your graph analyzer skills today.